I personally feel that whatever the number of bouquets were given to me, it actually holds to all the stakeholders who have made the success of the state. I would like to say that I would like to congratulate all the stakeholders of the state of Maharashtra from making the state as a ranking one in the solar rooftop projects. I'm also confident that in the upcoming days, with the support of all the stakeholders, we will be in a position to go and achieve the targets being laid by the governments at the state level as well as the national level. As all of you know that this renewable energy and in fact the solar energy are the dream projects and the targets are also a dream targets for the nations which we need to achieve within a very short span of time and the country as well as the state is moving positively in this direction. No doubt when we try to move towards a huge target, we are bound to face with a number of issues, number of resistances which comes into the way. But the way with which we are trying to move, I am confident that with the help of all of your supports, the state of Maharashtra and the government of India will be able to complete their ambitious target, ambitious project. Now before we go into the details of this, I would like to, from the policy makers, from the government of India, government of Maharashtra, and the government related with the renewable energy, I would just like to state down what are the different policies and how the government is working out and what is the current status in the field of renewable energy. Now let me give you a brief introduction about my organization, MIDA, which is a state nodal agency as well as a state designated agency. It has been formed under the Societies Act, Registration Act and the Bombay Public Trust Act. This is an organization which is an arm of a, a minari for the central government which is working for the promotion and the development of new renewable energies and its technology and in this way it is working, it is doing a role of a state nodal agency for the promotion of renewable energy. Along with that this organization is also involved in the energy conservation. So in terms of energy conservation this organization as an arm of a minari again is working as a state designated agency under the umbrella of Bureau of Energy Efficiency. So we are having two main roles which we are trying to play. Promotion of renewable energy as well as whatever energy is available, try to use that energy in a smart manner. So we want to have a conservation as well as we would like to have the generation of renewable energy. Now before we go into why these organizations were formed, why the MNRs was formed, why the state nodal agencies are formed, let us try to see what are the national objectives which have been framed for the working of this organization. So the first and most important objective of a national objective is the sustainable growth or by energy security. Then we would like to have the minimum dependence of the fo fossil fuels. We would like to have the reduction in the carbon footprints. We wish to have a develop to develop an alternative source of energy which is clean, reliable as well as sustainable. <coughs> And the foremost and the most important part which is coming from the government initiative is we would like to have an energy to be given to all that too for 24 by 7. Now in line with the national objectives the state government has also formulated its objectives and as far as the objectives they have said that at least 10% of the total energy which has been utilized in the state will be coming from the non conventional source of energy. And for this, in this regard, we are trying to change the policies or make the amendments in the policies which will try to analyze what is actually occurring and where we need to move, what we need to modify to attain or up obtain the goals which have been set at the state levels as well as the national levels. I feel proud that because of again the support of all the stakeholders, we are in a position to achieve number of numerous awards at the national levels and standing ranking first for the promotion of renewable energies, for achieving the achievements and ranking first in the sector of renewable energy as well as the energy conservations. Now when the, before we go into the details as to where we are, let us try to see where we are in terms of the power sector, Indian power scenario at the national level and at the state level. So let's try to go for the Indian scenario. Now let us try to go back to a little bit of a history then in the year 1947 when we just got an independence at that, mo at that moment of time we were having the total installed capacity of 1.362 gigawatts only wherein the per capita consumption was approximately equal to 16 units. We have moved from this mark and as on today we are having a total installed capacity of almost 331 gigawatt and the per capita is 1075 units per person. No doubt presently we are almost 1100 plus 
But if you just try to see as compared to the developed nation, we need to grow further because the the per capita of the biggest country is almost into the tune of almost 1200, uh, 12,000 to 13,000. Well as on an average, the per capita in the global scenario is almost approximately equal to 3000 units. So we are still lagging behind and we need to increase the per capita to show our more progress. Now as far as this total 331 gigawatt capacity is concerned, we are having different sectors which are trying to contribute to the total installation. We are having the state sector which are contributing almost 31% of the total energy with 102 gigawatts, followed by central 24% and the private sector is playing a dominant role in the Indian scenario where they are having almost an installed capacity to the tune of 45%. Now, when we said that 331 gigawatts, how it's been basically been categorized? So it has been categorized from the various numeral sources of renewable energy. Till date, the prominent source of energy was a thermal. Till date, it is the same scenario. We are having almost 219 gigawatts of thermal energy, which is contributing to almost 66%. Few days back, it was almost 70%. So now the composition of other energy source of energy is increasing. The thermal power sector is getting reduced, which is the need of the time. Nuclear, we are having almost 2%. Hydro 14% and renewable energy is picking up to a good level, but still a long mile to go. We are almost with 18%. As I, some, many of you might have heard that there are some countries in the world wherein for almost 300 days, the total energy, 100% energy is coming from renewable energy. So a long way to go for the Indian peoples, for the Indian government. Now why we want to go for an renewable energy? This is the question being answered at a number of forums. Let's try to see uh, in brief again about it. When we want to generate one unit of energy from the thermal plant, what we are trying to contribute to the nature? We are almost liberating 3,500 kilocalories of heat is getting liberated into the atmosphere. Almost one kilogram of carbon dioxide is liberated, 0.6 kilogram of nitrogen dioxide is liberated, almost 0 0.09 kilogram of carbon monoxide, 0 0.007 kilogram of sulfur dioxide or almost 200 grams of flash is getting liberated into the environment trying to create the green gas effects and many other issues which is trying to hinder the globe as a whole. So global warming and all sorts of issues are related with this fossil fuels. So this is the main intention because of which we have decided at the state level, national level as well as there is a global pressure that we need to move from a conventional source of energy and move towards the renewable energy sources. Now with this main objectives, we are having a national uh, target which is also known to many of us. We are having a national ambitious target of 175 gigawatt which has been broadly classified into three major sectors. One is solar, second is wind, followed by small hydro and biomass. As far as the solar is concerned, we want to go up till 100 gigawatts of solar which has also been further divided into three main categories. 40 gigawatt for a decentralized rooftop system, 40 gigawatts for utility scale projects, which can be somewhere around from one megawatt and above. And we would like to have 20 gigawatts from an ultra mega solar parks where we are trying to plan a capacity of 500 megawatts and above to achieve these targets. We are having 60 gigawatts of wind potential, which has been targeted by the year 2022, followed by 10 gigawatt of biomass and 5 gigawatt of small hydro, depending upon the natural resources which are available in the country. Now, till date, what is an achievement? As far as the total achievement is concerned, we are having almost 60 gigawatt of our renewable energy been installed. The current figures are quite a bit uh, higher than this, but approximately equal to 32 gigawatt uh, from wind, which is contributing to 54% with a maximum share as on today, followed by biopower, which is 13%, 8 gigawatt, small hydro, which is 4 gigawatt plus 8%, while solar projects with ground mount and a uh, rooftop contributing to 25%, nearing towards 15 gigawatt as on today. Now, once we have gone with the Indian scenario, our main thrust will be with a state scenario. So let us try to see what is the power scenario in the state of Maharashtra. As far as the Maharashtra is concerned, this is the second largest state having the maximum installation capacity to the tune of 42 gigawatts, with state contributing to 33%, private are playing a dominant role in Maharashtra. That's what was the reason I said that it is all because of the, all the support of the stakeholders contributing to 50% of the installation capacity and central sector in the state of Maharashtra is contributing to 17% of the total installations as on today. 
Now, well, whatever is energy which has been generated or in the get created because of all this installation, how this goes as far as the state of Maharashtra is concerned. So, Maharashtra is an industrial dominant state, agricultural dominant state, wherein the industrial utilization of the consumption is to the tune of 38%, followed by your agriculture sector, which is also a huge quantum, which is 23%. Followed by your uh, domestic sector, which is 22%, while your commercial sector 12%, and rest of the five, rest of them trying to contribute to 5% of the total consumption of the energy which is getting utilized in the state of Maharashtra. Now let us try to see what Maharashtra has thought of for the RE policy. So as far as these state policies which have been declared, declared and the target been given to the state of Maharashtra, Maharashtra is given a target of 14.4 gigawatt of renewable energy to be installed by the year 2022. For this purpose, Maharashtra has come with its renewable energy policy in 2015 and it has decided that it will take an energy mix of six different energies with the different target as wind, we would like to have 5000 megawatt, Bagasi, we would like to have 1000 megawatt, small hydro 400, biomass 300, industrial waste 200 and we would love to have a large chunk from solar to the tune of 7500. We are in a position uh, to reframe this target and we are planning that the renewable energy solar quantum should go approximately equal to 10,000 or 10 gigawatt for the state of Maharashtra. But so it's still under the process of discussions. Now out of this 7,500 megawatt, we are planning that Mahajanko, which is the state utility company in the sector of generation, will try to go to the tune of 2,500 megawatt either from their own side or with the help of PPPs which are likely to be launched and are in the process of launching in the state of Maharashtra. Now against this achievement where we are in the state of Maharashtra, against wind which we had 5000 megawatt, we have almost done with it. We are having a total install capacity of 4769 megawatt followed by Bagasi which we have exceeded the target of 1000 megawatt, we have gone 1848 gigawatts, small hydro 304, biomass 215, industrial waste 34, solar as on today we are done with almost 680 megawatt. So to the target of 14.4 gigawatt, we have almost done approximately 8 gigawatt in the state of Maharashtra. Now let us try to see what are the national solar mission, being solar as a front front which, where we are trying to see that we want to go towards 100 gigawatts. Let us try to see how the government of the, the national government has planned for this. So the initial target which was decided was, uh, was which was uh, almost equal to 22 gigawatt in, which was framed in 11th June 2010. According to that policy we were to go with 20 gigawatt of grid connected and 2, grid, two gigawatt for off grid so the total target was 22 gigawatt. The new government thought that it was very less as per the requirement and it was upscaled and it was made 100 gigawatt to be done by the year 2022. And these are the year wise target which has been set and we feel proud that we are almost in line because of some hurdles we are having a slowdown session but again it will get picked up and I am confident that we will be in a position to generate more than 100 gigawatts as per what we are trying to forecast in the, at the national level. Now to promote this kind of an activity, there is always a support which has been requested by the end users from the government side. So government is also promoting these things in a number of ways. So they are trying to promote with the help of subsidy schemes, incentive schemes, as well as they are trying to give some benefits in the income tax in terms of acceleration, depression benefits and other things. Uh, there was a policy in the state for which was trying to support the grid connected kind of an activities and as per this policies for the state of Maharashtra we had a benchmark cost of around about 61,000 rupees and we were dispersing 30% of this cost to the end user which was coming approximately equal to 18,300 rupees per kilowatt. But this subsidy scheme was only intended for few sectors and it was not for the government sectors. The different sectors which we were considered in this were the residential sector, all types of residential sectors. We were having social sectors like school, health, institutions, in medical colleges and other things which were coming under the social backgrounds. Government is also planning to give additional 20% from the state level for the social sector which is likely to be announced in a very sooner amount of time. Then we were having some institutions like the you know, community centers, welfare homes and others who were having the NGOs which were also covered under the bracket of 30% subsidies to promote the renewable energies in the rooftops category. As far as the government buildings were concerned, it was decided that government's organization should also go for so go solar as a whole. For this purpose, uh, the incentives were declared and we were getting an incentive to the tune of 16,250 rupees per kilowatt. 
if the government organization was in a position to execute the 80% or more of the work within the sanction period, if the work, work was not getting completed within to the tune of 80% and it was between 18 to 50%, 9,750 rupees, followed by 6,500 rupees if the work was more than 40% but lesser than 15% and if they were not able to complete this work, then the incentives were nil. Now, actually the boom from where this sector has grown was the net metering policies and its regulation for the state of Maharashtra. Now, we have all of you know that because of this grid connected situation, we have almost gone moved off the batteries. So, the utility network is working as an infinite storage of batteries, which has actually reduced the cost, increased the efficiency and actually increased the generation capacity also. So, this policy in Maharashtra was brought on 10th, this regulation was brought on 10th September 2015. As per this policy is concerned, all the contract demands or all the connections having a contract demand lesser than 1 megawatt, whether they are LT or ST, can come under the umbrella of net metering policies. As far as the technical part was concerned, it was decided that till the capacity of 40% of the distribution transformer capacity, the injection level will be av made available if they want to go Higher than that, a detailed study was requested. Now, what is the key driver for the state of Maharashtra because of which the Maharashtra is trying to do such a good kind of a thing in the sector of renewable energy, that too in the terms of solar? Let us try to see the energy billing, which is the clear indicator for the growth of the solar policies or the renewable energy. Now, if you just try to go into the various components of the billing, charge, billing which has been done by the state utilities, we will find that there are a number of components which goes and makes the total energy bill for the end users. We are having something called as fixed charge or the demand charge. We are having the electricity charge, uh, which we call an energy charge, the billing volt charge or the voltage wise, the fuel and adjustment cost which keeps on changing as per the value of the fuel at the global level. Then we will have something called as electricity duty. We have tax on sale delay payment charges, interests and interest on arrears and all sort of thing when it goes together how the billing comes up. If you just try to see a residential sector from the lower slab which is almost 4.24 rupees, it is almost 14 rupees or even plus more than that depending upon the consumption pattern which you are having in the state of Maharashtra. If you just try to go to the industries, industries are having from 8 rupees to 9 rupees, seasonal industries are having from almost 8 rupees to 10 rupees per unit. If you just try to go for the Public service sectors, again, it is from 7 to 8 rupees, whereas for public service, other including ports, we are having almost 10 rupees approximately as the unit charges for the consumption which you are trying to do. If you just try to see for the commercial, again, I have just given a comparison with what it was 10 years back, you will find that we were initially 3 rupees 20 paisa per unit. This year, for the lower slab, we are having 7.30 rupees. And if you go to the higher slab, as on today, we are playing almost 14 rupees plus. So, at whatever rate the energy is available from the renewable energy sector, that too prominently from the solar, if you just try to see what is available from the fossil fuel in the state of Maharashtra, it is quite large and that is what is playing the dominant role for the increase of this renewable energy in this sector in the state of Maharashtra. Now, what are the different innovative schemes in addition to this which has been planned by the government? So, the first scheme which has been declared and which is a prestigious scheme for the state of Maharashtra is the Chief Minister's Solar Agriculture Feeder Scheme. Now, as all of you might be knowing that different sectors in the state of Maharashtra are getting the energies at different rates. If you just try to see the farmers or the agriculture sectors, though we said that, they are, that it is a dominant sector using a maximum consumption, a second consumption kind of a category, that is almost 23% of the total consumption is going in the agricultural sector, these consumers are given a energy at a very low rate, almost approximately good 1 rupees 10 paisa. When we say that we require a cost of 5 rupees per unit on an average, and giving the uh, agricultural consumers at a rate of 1 rupees 10 paisa, automatically it gives rise to another kind of a situation that is there needs to be a huge amount of cross subsidy so that we can have a balancing of the energy and because of that generally the tariff of residentials and commercial consumers are too high trying to hinder the certain amount of growth in the commercial and the industrial sector. So what the government has thought about it? The government is seriously thinking that how this farmers can be given the cheapest source of energy and how they can be brought out of the total sector by making them independent. So it has been decided that almost 15 giga, 1500 megawatts of solar plants are going to be specifically installed for the farmers. This is going to reduce the cross subsidy level, try to reduce the cost rate, unit rate of commercial and industrial sector. This is the first thing which we are trying to achieve. At the same time when we want to maintain the load profile, 
The utility needs that whatever energy is available in the night times, it is not been utilized by majority of the stakeholders like the industrial commercials. So this energy is generally given to the farmers at the night time. There is a call from the farmers that they would like to have the energies in the daytime. So whatever the amount of energy getting generated but through this mechanism, this energy is going to be given to the farmers during the daytime. So government is trying to satisfy two conditions. They are trying to see that how we can reduce the cross subsidies. At the same time, how we can give an energy to the farmers during the daytime and try to make them independent and try to remove from the main, tra main track of the energy consumptions. So that is the main theme regarding this Chief Minister Solar Agriculture Scheme. The first two pilot projects have been launched. One is at Raligan City Ahmednagar and the second is at Kolumbi village in Yavatma district and we have got a bidding for 2.94 rupees and 2.97 rupees per unit for the period of 25 four years. In addition to that almost uh, two different tenders have been floated by Mahajanko, one for 200 megawatts, second for 300 megawatts. In addition to that it has been decided that uh, Mahavitran is also going to come out with 1000 megawatt of tenders for this solar AG feeder. So there is a huge quantum of utility scale projects likely to come in the state of Maharashtra within a couple of months. Now as far as this chief minister program is concerned we are having different stakeholders. We are having Mahajanko who is going to develop the land and the infrastructure with the help of these solar power developers. They are going to have a PPA with MSCD cell and Mahajanko for the year of 25 years. MSCD cells for this project is are going to provide the evacuation arrangement. For the pilot project MSCD cell is going to pre provide a uh, evacuation arrangement. For the 200 megawatt also MSCD cell is going to provide the evacuation arrangement and the rest of them will be in the scope of the uh, PPA holders itself. MEDA is going to work here as the uh, for registering the project as well as whatever is the viability gap funding required to make this project sustainable are going to be extended by the MEDA and solar power project developers are going to have the challenge of installing the system as well as doing the operation and maintenance for the period of 25 years and trying to give the generation as per the uh, assurance given by them. In addition to this, the government is also sin sincerely thinking on drinking water pumps for the rural areas. If, uh, if you just try to recall that the smaller villages are not in a position to pay the electricity bills and majority of time it is observed that the drinking water becomes an issue or the supply becomes an issue for the drinking water. So trying to take this thing into consideration and trying to make them independent, we have decided that the villages which are having a population lesser than 5000s will be given a off-grid solar system for the drinking water so that they will become sustainable on their own. In the first phase we have targeted that we will be giving almost 2 crore rupees per district. We have planned a scheme of 100, 100 crores rupees for the state of Maharashtra and this scheme is going to be completely executed and implemented by the state of MEDA. In addition to that there are a number of things which are coming up and where Maharashtra is trying to behave in a positive manner which it may be an electrical vehicles, it may be a storage scenarios and many other sectors which are trying to show interest and is going to really assist the state as a whole. I will be happy to answer your queries and try to take the support of all the stakeholders again for the achievement that Maharashtra has done and will be I am confident that again in the upcoming futures all the stakeholders will show a positive sense of commitment and cooperation for the growth of renewable energy sectors especially in the state of Maharashtra. Thank you for the organizers, thanks a lot.